Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you're checking out a serum tip and trick tutorial video. Now, in this video, I'm going to be showing you, and I've touched on this before, probably actually a long time ago when Serum just came out, about how to import your own wavetables into Serum. But I wanted to talk about something that I got a couple questions coming through the uh, YouTube comments asking when you import your own wavetables or audio as a wavetable, why doesn't it sound remotely like the actual source material? And then uh, I wanted to actually kind of clarify that and also show you how you can layer Foley with sounds directly inside of Serum so they actually follow the pitch of your sound. So right now I have a little demo here and we're going to play it. So we're going to be looking at this square lead right here. So right now we have some LFO tool going on on the actual track, a little bit of channel EQ, and it's just a square sound with a noise. Okay. And the square has a little bit of roughed up edges going on here. If we look at the actual wavetable editor, it's just a square with some noise essentially to rough it up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to layer in some Foley into Oscillator B. And I'm going to show you how I like to draw, drag and drop audio into the wavetable editor inside of Serum. So I have a popcorn Foley sound that I want to get in here. All right. That's what it sounds like. Now we're going to drag and drop this and you'll get these different options. And my favorite one for doing this is import constant frame size pitch average. It will do its thing, and depending on how long your sample is, it'll take either a little bit or a long time. And this was a medium length sample, I guess. I mean, it's only about two seconds long. If you have like a five second sample, it'll take a second. Now, let's turn off oscillator A, and we're going to solo the sound here, and we're going to turn off the filters. And if I play this and scan to the wavetable. And this is going to address the question that I've got a couple times. And that is, how come when you move a, a waveform in, like this one, it sounds nothing like the actual source material? For instance, this is you know, popcorn sound, and this is not popcorn sound. Okay, well, there's a couple reasons for that. First is a wave table is going to be basically just different cycles or frames of waveforms that are mixed together, making the whole the sum of the wavetable. And with the wavetable position stagnant or not in a position where it's not scanning through the different frames or cycles, it's just going to basically be pegged on that one frame or sample, and it's going to essentially act like a waveform. So if we move through some of these, this is like a really buzzy sign sound. Right? Kind of like an FM type sign sound. And that's because it's going to, you know, kind of break down into the fundamentals of sound, which is going to be sinusoidal. And then depending on the source material, it can be square or, sign or saw, uh, maybe even triangle. So unless you're moving through the wavetable, it's not going to sound anything like your source material. And then you also have to consider the rate at which the source material was moving because you need to move through the wavetable to get remotely close to the actual source sample. So we're going for that popcorn foley here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first clean up the actual sound inside the wavetable editor and we're going to click on the little pencil to do that. And you can see all these different frames down here. This is your frame editor, your cycle editor. You can see down here is like a snapshot of each of the frames. We don't have any sound until frame 79. And that's a lot of cycles or frames. So what I'm gonna do is click on uh, 78 here. And we're gonna go and shift click to highlight all those. We're gonna go add or remove and we're gonna do remove multi selection. So now we're gonna scan through these sounds at a much, um, well, it's gonna start at a proper point. Now with this, uh, this middle section here, if I kind of move through these, there was a lot of stops in that popcorn fully because there's popcorn popping. So let's go to a section where there's not a lot of sound. Like let's look at this section here where it's 67, all this stuff. So let's actually take out from like 65 to 70. We're gonna remove, remove multi-selection keep moving through here and the sound kind of picks back up. So let's take out some from like 150. And I'm just kind of guessing right now. Let's take out some from like one, actually let's do one, let's do 148. 
to about 158. And we're going to do add, we're going to remove multi-selection. So uh, we've taken out the frame, but a lot of frames, but we still have 162 frames to work with. So it's not like if we look at this, we don't have information to kind of scan through. So let's go back to this. Now I'm going to go, if we, if we uh, listen to this soloed, Okay, and I, I think I want that first pop out of there because it's just going to be too loud. So we're going to go back into the wavetable editor and let's just let's get that first one out, actually. Get some of these really prominent ones out. We're going to go add or remove, remove multi-selection. So now it shouldn't be as big. All right, so that's what moving through it's going to sound like. There's a lot of pops and unevenness with it. So I'm going to go to the wavetable editor. We're going to go to process, and we're going to choose the X fade. And I like doing uh, X fade at the edges, the grid side. And you'll you'll notice that with some of these sounds, that it now fades out. So now we don't have these zero crossings where we're going to get the popping through the wavetable. So now I'm going to try to find the actual. There's we talked about before earlier in the video that you need to be moving through the wavetables to get remotely close to the actual source sound. And if we're trying to add like a Foley element to our sound, we need to move through it. We also have to be aware of the rate at which it was playing back in audio versus how it's playing back in serum, which, which would affect the pitch. Let's take it down to negative two. So there are parts in there now that sound like the popcorn popping a little bit. Okay, so we're just going to bring that back up to negative one for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to an LFO, and I've kind of already done this. The stock LFO shape would be more like a triangle, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to make like a ramp up shape. And I'm just going to move this all the way over, and kind of have it ramp up like that. Now we're going to modulate the wavetail position with that. And I'm going to have it be a pretty quick right here. So now it sounds like sections of the popcorn click. Hear that? So let's speed it up a little. Let's actually slow it down then. All right, so one, an eighth note was the best. And we don't want it going all the way out. Okay, so let's move the pitch or the octave up and see what happens. All right, so that negative one range sounds about right. So now we actually have something that sounds reminiscent of the actual sound that we loaded in. Let's bring back in the noise and bring back in the oscillator. All right, so let's, uh, let's I don't know what's going on there. Let's bypass that. Now let's turn on the filter. And then it's kind of cool to add a little bit of voices, like a couple of voices of uh, unison, so you can actually spread out this Foley sound. And now you have this weird Foley sound layered with the lead. You can do some really cool stuff with this, but that is how I wanted to address not only why the audio samples that you were loading in and importing as wavetables didn't sound like that, it's because you're, it was pegging and kind of posting up on one frame or cycle, and you need to move through the wavetables at a rate that is similar and a pitch that is similar to the actual sound. And then also how to actually layer some Foley with your sounds and create this second oscillator with a lead or a bass or a synth chord that's actually going to add some nice character to your sound. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.